Matt, appreciate your time. I know you're uh, about to uh, get ready for some uh, wrestling events tonight. Uh, good luck doing that, and um, good luck on February 6th in South River, New Jersey, taking on Kyle the Beast. I appreciate it, guys. Thank you so much for having me on. All right, take care, Matt. You guys too. Take care. That was the bulldozer, Matt Tremont, ladies and gentlemen. He's taking on Kyle the Beast, as we heard earlier from Kyle himself. And uh, that is going to be a classic physical bout, without without a doubt. Um, Want to wanna, wanna come in on that? No? Ah, uh, Dan's gun shy. He doesn't want to come on the air. Um, the the uh, owner of the Funkenstein Wrestling Superstore, English Town Flea Market, Blue Building, booths 46 to 47. That's right. And uh, you guys got to come and check this out. Every time I come here, I just I just look around, and it's just more and more amazed of, uh, of how much stuff they have and just the stuff that you find. I don't... <laughs> It's not even the stuff that you have. It's just stuff that you bring in after. It's just like, where do you find this stuff? It, it, it's amazing. Absolutely amazing. And I will tell you, though, uh, I almost walked out with the display at Walmart. Uh, they have all the brand new elites and double packs and stuff like that. And it was a floor display on a pallet. And it has this uh, rectangular WWE logo and guys on it. And I was trying to pop it off and stash it under the cart. But... It, I couldn't get, damn, I couldn't get it off, but um, I'm going, I'm, it's going to be my goal is to, uh, before all said and done, uh, I'm going to pull pieces of that off and bring, and bring it here. <laughs> Even if we got to slowly build a display one piece at a time. Uh, a lot of duct tape. But uh, at this time, I want to I want to play a interview that I had with the uh, former, well, he's still current, but uh, former co-owner of Pro Wrestling Syndicate, Pat Buck, um, about the separation of him from the company and the future or lack of future of PWS and his new baby, Russell Pro, which is basically a wrestling company that he expanded from Creative Pro, which is his school in New York. He's now moved it into New Jersey and formed Russell Pro. Their debut show is March 5th at the Rawway Rec Center in Rawway, New Jersey. Damage 365 Radio will be part of that uh, as we will be bringing uh, some wrestlers to that show as uh, big events earlier that day. So let's see if I can remember this itinerary. Um, all I know is I had less gray hair before I started booking all these people. But um, we are bringing two big events, Amber O'Neill. Barbie Hayden, Chelsea Diamond, Nyla Rose, Cowboy Bob Orton, Eric Young, and both Killer Bees. We will leave from Big Event. Nyla is going to be leaving with Joe Bellini and going to Warriors of Wrestling. Okay, so she's taken care of. Um, the whole crew is going to the meet and greet at, at uh, Russell Pro. After that meet and greet, Bob is going to, um, not going? Okay, Bob is going somewhere. Um, we'll let you know where. And Killer Bees and Chelsea Diamond are going to Warriors of Wrestling for intermission. And Eric Young, Barbie Hayden, and Amber O'Neill are staying in wrestling for WrestlePro. Ay, ay, ay. So I will be in Rahway with Amy. Nick and Jonathan will be in Staten Island. And another courier will be bringing Bob to a place to be named later. So uh, talking about spreading yourself very thin. I feel like a piece of white bread with a with all that's left of the butter in the container. It's, it's crazy. But uh, yeah, that's my life. And all this as I just come home from San Diego and have to worry about a Stratomatic draft, a brand new season starting, um, another a week of work, and then the big event. So I should be nice and stressed. <laughs> but uh, yeah, here is the interview with Pat Buck. So uh, we'll be back in uh, a little bit. And we're joined right now with former Pro Wrestling Syndicate owner Pat Buck, who is now got a new baby called wrestling pro welcome to the show pat 
Thanks for having me. Actually, I'm going to correct you. Oh, sorry. Still a half-owner. Half-owner, <laughs> half co-owner, co-owner. Uh, co -owner. Um, I am a, uh, but yeah. I'm not moving forward. I am full owner, pretty much, of, uh, of Russell Pro, though. But thanks for having me. Okay, man. Um, you know, kind of uh, the thing that everybody wants to know, I mean... Uh, you know, I'm sure you're going to be asked this at least a thousand times going down the road. Probably never going to, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> never going to go a day without hearing it. But um, what exactly went wrong that caused uh, something that everybody saw from the surface, of course, that was so mm -hmm. good? And like, how did it all go wrong? I don't know. That's a tough one to, to juggle. I mean, I think that with any partnerships, or you know, when you when you you work with somebody, there, there's going to be times that, you know, you don't necessarily agree on things, and there's always going to be frustrations, no matter how, you know, uh, close of a relationship you have with someone. I mean, any relationship, any sort of business partnership, you're always going to have your uh, your headaches. Mm -hmm. And I think that for the better course of, uh, you know, four years, I mean, because technically I have, you know, two businesses. I have Creator Pro, and I'm still a half owner of the Lessing Syndicate. Right. Uh, it just wasn't fun in one of them, and it, w it just wasn't a good time anymore. Um, and I just, you know, I didn't agree with a lot of, you know, creative decisions. And <clears throat> um, I just think that I was at a different place. It, it's, it's, there's a lot of stuff I can get. There's a lot of grimy, dirty stuff, and, and it's been labeled as, of course, it's my opinion. But you know, I have a lot, so much hard proof of stuff that went awry that. It's almost, it would be naive to call what I think and what I say opinion. And I'm really big on reputation. And I, I didn't really like a lot of things with uh, Pro Wrestling Syndicate where I felt like <clears throat> the good parts about it were, you know, using homegrown guys and putting them in certain, and basing around them because I'm, I'm the one that was training with them, grooming them. And based on the whole company, because I don't think that's ever really necessarily been done before, as far as kind of creating your own roster. Because if you look at any successful independent promotion or any promotion ever in general, the the true success of it came through its talent. And right. for the most part, those successful promotions bring in outside people, a lot of them, and most of them base their their whole their whole products around their performers and I of course want to and will continue to do so but it always made sense to me to go to build from within it always made sense to me to kind of um, train guys from scratch and almost in a you know not a selfish sort of way but kind of in a selfish sort of way if you can groom guys who could really have that high caliber in ring ability and coach them into having the, you know, helping them with their, their, their ring skills, their physiques, whatever it may be, whatever you need in professional wrestling. Right. Could I one day have an entire, almost, I'm never going to have a self-created, you know, complete roster of professional wrestlers. That would be delusional. But if I have enough where they're kind of from scratch, one, it commands loyalty, but at the same time, like, it's really practical to have guys all in the same area that, uh, that are well received by the fans and I wanted to mix that with a lot of outside independent folk and I, I'll just say it here that I'm really in touch with what happened in independent wrestling I am a total mark I know where you know all the different promotions everywhere I'm familiar that's my job and uh, this is what I do it's 24 hours a day of, of professional wrestling whether it be mm -hmm. training or promoting um, or doing a ring rental. Like, this is just, this is my livelihood, and I'm aware of pretty much everybody. When I don't know who someone is, I try to find out something about them immediately because I need to be current. And there's a lot of guys that I wanted to book and bring in here, you know, guys like Team Tremendous and uh, being popular independent acts, and, and I wasn't really allowed to do so because, you know, I have a partner. We don't see things out of eye. He has his taste. I have my taste. <clears throat> is there some stuff that went on behind the scenes? Yes. Is there, am I being watched like a fucking hawk right now? Sorry, comparison. Uh, yeah. And I don't want, you know, I dressed the live crowd last night. I think people thought, and I'm, I'm pretty sure he thought too I was going to, you know, rip them apart because I, I do have a history of kind of 
blasting people if, if they've really done wrong by me. And I think for this one, I realize it's important. Uh, believe me, I love putting someone on blast and, and kind of calling them out for their bullshit. But the truth is that it's, it's not really about who's right. It's really about what's right. Mm-hmm. And I care about the, the future of my promotion. I care about tomorrow's show. Today's show and tomorrow's show, I'm not going to dwell too much in the past. And ultimately, I just want to move on. Uh, and I would believe me, I'd love to get into the specifics. And if that comes out one day, it, it, it might. But for right now, i got to kind of be careful with what is put out there because at the tail end of it, someone's going to use all of that stuff to try to spin it against me. And I want to, you know, rid myself of that. I don't, I've had a, called that a pretty decent reputation as far as promoting and, and training and, and just, you know, fair, fair business dealings, whatever you want to say. Um, I think Russell Pro, the handcuffs are off and it's just going to be tremendous shows. And I'm working with everybody going forward. I mean, I'm working with yourself. I'm working with anyone who loves this business and, can we can there's a way for all of us to capitalize sometimes there, there's you know there's always going to be headaches and tension between people but if you really work it out there's ways to do good repeat business and the ones that don't will just continue over time carve out a bad reputation for themselves so much so where nobody will do business with them again right. and I really think that if you know if 10 people are, are, are in professional wrestling and they're perceiving someone and you know if they're ever brought up in conversation like, you know, that person's kind of an asshole, or that, that person is this. Chances are, if, if nine out of ten people are saying that, it's probably true. Perception's reality. And I just felt like, you know, I have to distance myself from that. And personally, it was a big, you know, it, it hurt. You know, I, I, I'm, I have a wedding coming up. I have groomsmen. Mm-hmm. I have one less groomsman. So to, to say that there's, you know, a lot of, incredible personal animosity out there would be an understatement. I wish I could say a lot more. I kind of got to be protected. Okay. It's understandable. Um, let me let me ask you a couple questions uh, regarding uh, PWS and how some sure. of the things were handled. And, and just let me know if it was true or not because, you know, there's a lot of things that are, that are said uh, by people who, you know, might not necessarily know the truth. Now... Okay. Your, as far as your roster was concerned, were, you, were they very restricted or where they were allowed to work or, or if they were allowed to work for anybody else? I was restricted at first. The only person that I ever said uh, don't do anything for, it's actually a weird situation where um, after I left FCW, whatever, early stage of NXT and came back up here to kind of test my hand and, and kind of training and promoting, before I even got on board PWS, I like to say that I started PWS. It's not necessarily true, even though it kind of existed for me. But it, it, the only time it matters is when I kind of started. But anyway, <laughs> when um started to get the ball rolling with with that, there there's a lot of petty New Jersey promoters uh, at that time period, and <clears throat> one in particular who I will speak ill about. Uh, his name is Joe Panzerino. Okay. He had an operation called NWS. Uh, I wrestled for him multiple times. I always felt like he treated the boys like shit. I always felt like the cards were lackluster. And it was just really, and it, but the incredible thing was this guy was very smart. And he had like 50 to 60 dates a year. I mean, next to like Vince, I don't know if there's someone that runs like, had so many shows and was successful. However, I, I got. I looked at that and I, I said, you know what? If this guy can do it, I want to do that because I would love to have that many events a year and spread out and promote. So my first show with PWS was in March of 2012. So we're going almost four years. Okay. And when I announced that, immediately someone was calling the building, and immediately someone was trying to. I've literally never promoted a show before, and I have people working against me. And I know it was him. I know for a fact, 100%, it was him. He tried everything he could to kind of, he, he couldn't do much, but like, you know, mess with us. And he was a crappy promoter when I worked for him. And he, he did wrong by a lot of people and a lot of friends of mine, Kevin Matthews and a whole slew of guys. If you ask them, what do you think about Joe Panzerino, Dapper Joe, they'll say the same thing. Okay. Fast forward a couple of years, um, we, uh, watch him go he went away. And I think he went away kind of 
kind of because of us, because this guy was, you know, cleaning, I mean, this is all legitimate. This guy was collecting a disability check.